Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a piece of MDF that I've already pre-glued a strip of just basic pine and marked the center of uh, the board. We're going to use our laser guide to line up that mark and be dead on accurate every time. So the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to line this up so that we have two tracks of our T-Track system and I'm going to put these little, I don't know what you call them, they're for making jigs basically and they, they fit a uh, quarter 20 screw and in order for us to try and get this lined up fairly accurately each time I'm going to go ahead and put a couple sets of them. So that's the next step right now is we're going to get this lined up and we're going to mark and drill those holes. Okay so what I've done is I've, I've placed the board on the on the back side of the CNC just so that I can accurately uh, line up the centers of these holes. We'll take a square, we'll square that up and run two lines down and we'll take it over to the drill press and drill around. I'd like to say that this part of our video is sponsored by woodpeckers, but I don't have any sponsors. I bought these on my own because they're good quality. Just kind of carrying those marks up and over here. And we will use these for reference lines, obviously, to ensure that we have our holes as close to the center as possible. So, so the screws that I'm using uh, will need to be countersunk uh, into the board uh, a little bit just because they're, they're not quite long enough. We are going to go ahead and drill and then countersink a hole in here in order to make sure that I have enough length on that screw to... To secure the jig. So I will go do that now and I'll come back. Okay so we got the holes drilled and, and countersunk. Now all I need to do is <clears throat> put the screws through these holes and get this kind of started. We'll be able to put it on and give it a go. Turns out I need to countersink that just a little bit more. Drag nab it. Don't you hate it when the plan don't come together? That damn Hannibal Smith. I'm sure all his plans didn't work out the way he would like to either. Get down a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we just push it up against here tight then tighten these each down. And rock solid, it's not going anywhere. Well, we're almost there. The only thing we have left to do now is to bring the uh, router in and get a zero point off of our crosshair. This is one of those uh, XHCs. And uh, like I said uh, in my last video, absolutely recommend it. It's wireless, it, it's, it's great. I love it. I even have my own uh, little cheat sheet written down here on the front just so that I don't move this in the wrong way because I'm so used to the keyboard and arrow up down moves it the right direction and I always get backwards on on the dial. So I want to bring this over using the uh, X and it says here to the right go right so I need to go left. Now we want to go to the front here it says right takes it backwards so we want it to come forward so we're going to go left. That ought to be good enough to change out the bit here. All right, so this is our white side quarter inch up cut. And we've got our tall dust shoe here since that's the long uh, bit in there. And now let's turn our laser crosshair on. We now want to line this up so we need to go backwards. And we need to go back to the right. I made first a pencil line and then I came back and I used a knife to put a knife line in there. And that laser is right in that knife line right now. In theory, all I'll have to do is bring this board back in, put this back in these two tracks, tighten it down, and use the laser to dial in the center there. And I should be good every time for repeatable process with this jig on my CNC machine. Okay, I forgot one uh, one step that we still need to do, 
and that is to use our laser zero button to take where we've centered the laser here on the machine using the laser and we hit our laser zero button and it should uh, recenter the machine based on the center of the bit in coordination with where that laser is. Uh, we now have our X0, Y0 has been set. We can go ahead and switch our laser off and now we will get that G code loaded up. Well, I just got an error message. It says, error, UC100 not respond. Please check the connection and restart Mach 3. Well, this is gonna be a, as true of a test as I guess you can get on the accuracy here. So, well kids, let's see what we're gonna do because somehow or another, we gotta get this puppy back to action here. And let's tell it laser zero. <laughs> So now it's just set that and now we need to bring down and set our Z. So we're going to set our Z zero. And now we'll raise her back up and we'll put our brush back on. And then let's try again. All right, as you can see, uh, using my crosshair laser, I am absolutely certain that I can get this machine dialed back in X and Y exactly where, where it left off. I had to restart this three three different times during the machining and each time I had to reset it X and Y zero. I use a uh, UC100 uh, motion controller to connect from my PC to the drive unit that I have uh, via USB cable. This is the first time I've ever had any problems with it. Now here's the interesting thing. When I came back here and I stopped it because I saw it doing some kind of circle which I have no idea where that came from. I don't know if anybody else out there has ever experienced this, but literally I used the same file. I opened the same file up multiple times. It was cutting the G code for this. It was cutting out these pockets. It got here to this pocket just fine, came to this pocket, pocketed down once, and somehow it, it started cutting circles. I mean, it looks like it cut this circle, and then I, I don't know what it did, but then it cut some other kind of like, like way out of, I, I just don't know. I stopped the machine and reloaded the G code again and started it back up and it, it came back in and it, it ran through it fine, no circle. I don't know where the circle came from. It's not in the G code that I can see. So I, I, just, I scratched my head on that one. I don't have any idea. However, I don't believe it's going to have an impact on the use of the jig. Next thing I need to do is work on getting a touch-off plate set up for my unit. But for right now, I can do it by hand, by eye. Set our Z, and raise her back up. Put our dust shoe on and put on our hearing protection and get ready to cut another set of coasters. I don't know about you, but that looks pretty good to me. And it's just as easy as cutting the blanks, popping them in, making sure that, you know, they don't wiggle, they're cut to the right, right dimension, which these are. So a half inch thick and they're four by four. I have my blanks ready. I pop one set of coasters out, pop another set in, load up the G-code and away she goes. This is a big time saver. When I first started making coasters, I was just basically buying the, the board, putting it on the machine and letting the machine not only do the V-carving, but then I was changing out the, the V-carving bit for a quarter inch end mill and letting it sit here and go around and around and around four times for each coaster to cut them out. At the end of the day, really what we're going for, I can do all of the, the machining outside of the CNC and we're really only trying to use the CNC to help help us in our in our endeavors of woodworking right so doing all of the woodworking all of the preparation of the blank putting the round over 
rounding the corners, everything else, I can do that with standard woodworking machinery far quicker than the machine will do it. And so having this jig that I can reposition and using my crosshair laser, I can always get this XY dialed right back in. And of course the Z, I just set the Z based on the material. So, you know, if this half inch is a little bit under half inch by the looks of it, that I can obviously set the Z height so that it's, you know, the right, right depth. Okay, so as you can see, this, uh, this jig is working out exactly how I was hoping. From here, I basically take this and I, I try and seal it with a seal coat first uh, to help the paint that I'm gonna spray it with from getting into all of the pores of the wood. And then I shoot it with flat black paint, wait for that to dry. I sand that off. I put a round over on it. And then I use Formby's low gloss tongue oil finish. I build up a number of coats of that. And just to kind of give you an example, here was the uh, coaster that we uh, were cutting at the beginning of this of this video. I basically just put a, a single coat of the uh, tongue oil finish on it. Uh, but you can see basically uh, shooting it with flat black paint makes uh, the carving pop really well. Uh, you could also leave it and just finish it, do some sanding and finish it without painting it. I like the paint because I think, like I said, it makes the, the engraving pop a little bit more. But it's whatever is, you know, whatever you want to do. So, like I said, this uh, this jig is going to work out really good. I'm able to uh, start and stop the machine, recenter it using the laser, and I'll be able to, to uh, knock out all of my coasters this year. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, I want to thank you guys for hanging with Harv today, and we'll catch you on the next video. Welcome back to Hang with Harv. Today, a little bit of a PSA for everyone. Remember, when working around lumber and other heavy equipment, always wear your protective safety gear. This has been a public service announcement from yours truly, Harv.